after all of uh, you know five films finally coming together, the part where you know these two forces, these two. I want. I can't even. You know, you, people are often too too comfortable saying David and Goliath. They forget about times where it's Goliath versus Goliath. <laughs> and after just the sheer amazement of seeing the Kirby Reed and Sam Carpenter cross paths with the whole. Oh hey Kirby. Oh hey Sam. Oh we went to high school together. Oh wait. You don't want. I don't want your help at all. Get away from me, weirdo. To them walking outside. That was naturally the part where you know I needed a day just to digest all of that, come to terms with what that means for the sake of the franchise of these two <laughs> people have actually you know now face to face. It's like it's a, it's a real Freddy versus Jason kind of moment. They finally finally came across it. You know, Alien versus lot, Predator. A lot to take in. A lot to take in. So you know, took a day off. It wasn't me getting just horrifically bored and just disgusted with the viewing experience and wanting a break or anything of the source whatsoever. It was a thousand percent just me needing to come to terms with the mastery of masterclass writing that is anything James Vanderbilt puts his hands on from the <laughs> likes of Zodiac, shockingly enough, to things like Scream 6. I mean, the first four of the Master of Suspense, last two we got James Vanderbilt, Master of... Good writing. Good writing. Phenomenal writing and human, and human sounding dialogue. It doesn't at all sound like previously coined human adjacent what a lucky franchise and honestly i say human adjacent but i feel like that's me being too kind because I, I i feel like that adjacent part only is even apparent because it's coming out of the mouth of human beings that's true i'm pretty positive just reading it on the page it's even flatter which is harder because <laughs> a lot of time you know most screenplays can kind of balance saying oh there wasn't my I, in my head it sounded better it's like i don't know man i think in your head it sounded worse I think you're right. Cause I was reading up some. I think trivia. the Island Misfit toys you cast to be in this movie are the really doing a lot of legwork here. They to are to make it as shitty as it is, which is saving it from being as shitty as it could be. I read some trivia about it. the one scene that that we, I'm not going to say. It's not there. The one scene was actually really, really good. Turns out that was all improvised. Was Impro- yeah, page. it wasn't in the page. And he's like, "What the fuck is this? Like, we need to fill some time. He's like, use one of my other awesome scenes. Like, let's get a scene that's not written by James Vanderbilt up in here. But they like, we just need something that's a little more natural. And he was like, you so we come back natural? to watching the movie, and uh, it was up an amazing sit. Sit back down. <laughs> then uh, opens up the movie and uh, Jenna Ortega just absolutely clocks and rocks Courtney Cox. She can throw a punch. It's kind of crazy. I was I thought it was a little silly earlier in the movie when Ghostface kind of just came out of the bushes, jumped on her, and she's just like, ah, fuck it. It's no big deal. No, 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 no skin off my back, mm. literally, and threw him off of her. <laughs> But then, seeing the way she kind of just, you know, she plants the feet, turns in the hips, and just full power. Just yeah, she's got lower center of gravity. It comes with a lot of power honestly, and force. Honestly, true, probably. Honestly, you think, oh, it's, you know those videos where it's someone's like, try to pick me up, and like the biggest strong I can't do is like, yeah. it's center of gravity. <laughs> Remember when it was like, it's like probably like seven, everyone's anywhere from like fifth to seventh grade science teacher. One of those three years, you had some really nerdy, annoying teacher took it way too seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, look at this cool experiment for the day. Look at this one. Look at this. It's like, oh, we're going to, we're going to. We're gonna. Uh, this is gonna. This is great, guys. Look at this. We're gonna put. We're gonna have a walk, and we're gonna put. Uh, we're gonna put some uh, um, sugar in here, and it's gonna burn and become caramel. Pretty cool, guys, right? It's like, is this science class or is this baking class? It's actually, I'm economics. Sit back down. Sit back down. I kind of. I kind of lost. I kind of lost the control of the steering wheel Step there. Step back. <laughs> Step back. No. So then, Gail. <clears throat> By the way, crisis averted from earlier. It turns out Gail's a bitch. Went back on her word. She's a bitch. It really big. It, Wipe like, that face off your head, bitch. <laughs> nice dude. Why does she like want to come back and play this character? There's nothing enjoyable about this character. Know. Well, they, they, they're, they're like, hey, Gail, what if we have it where that thing where your character had that? I don't know. I guess she could loosely define as an arc in the last one, in which she was like, now that Dewey's dead, I won't be a bitch. And I'll instead not do the not do the book. Turns out again that was short that was short lived. Yeah. She she did the book. It's one year later. She did the, six months later. Actually, they made it very clear it's been six months. Because Jenna so Ortega said work, like, that three night. days from six months ago or whatever. Mm. So it's like she literally must have changed. Yeah, she must have gone home, sat down, poured herself a glass of wine, and like ah, that was really big of me today. And then she like, kind of looked around her apartment. She looked at her watch, and she was like. You know, I haven't felt like writing in a while. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just go try writing something else. Maybe, 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 because I feel like writing right now, but maybe yeah. I'll, just, I'll just try, I'll try and goof it up a little bit. She's got bit. all this extra energy. Just yeah, gotta write something down. going over there before she realized that she turned in an entire 300 page manuscript. And before she even knew that, it was already published. You know that thing, mechanic writing? No. It's when she lets the spirits possess and they just, the writing comes Oh, Dewey helped her. You're right. Yeah, yeah, was, Dewey's ghosts. like, no, this is a story that has to be told. You have to tell the That's story, it. Gail. So uh, it's actually penned by her and Dewey. If you look at the the jackets, do you think we give the screen? Do you think the screenwriter? Do you think we give James Vanderbilt uh, points for having her be a heinous cunt that we've known her to be this entire time in this movie, or is it undeserved because how dumb it was for her to fake anything in the ending of Scream Five to say she wasn't going to publish a book? Is it more rewarding that yes, she is a bitch and she did publish the book, or is it less rewarding that they even said to us she's not going to do it? 
No, it's way more annoying this way. Yeah, I, I want to like her because she's actually kind of fucking cool in the first two movies. In the first two, yeah, I like, and I don't. And in the third one, her shittiness is okay because it's it helps just highlight how awesome Parker Posey is. True, so you can forgive her. But then four, yeah. five, six, it's. I still like, maintain geez, the lady. best version for this franchise to have continued on was to off Courtney Cox in that dumbass mirror room and let let Parker Posey after witnessing. Gail Weathers die. Well, I guess her wasn't even. I don't know. Parker Posey. Let yeah. Parker Posey witness Gail Weathers die. She gets so tra- traumatized by it. She just stays in character as yeah. Gail Weathers, and she's in the rest of the movies. Much better franchise. And then everyone's like, "What's her name?" What's and her she's name? like, "Park." Watch that face Park off your head, bitch. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And then Sam says, "Um, <laughs> it's really cool." After we see how much of a, a jerk off uh, Gail is after Jenna Ortega rocks her, Sam's like. Did After she get what, in all of these, Courtney Cox. Yeah. Uh, first one, yes. Second one, I feel like there's there's at least a partial hit in the second one. I don't think so, unless Liev Schreiber clocks her. I don't think so. I think he says, "Screw you, He's Gail." Like, hey, Gail. What? You don't trust me now? You haven't doubts <laughs> about my character? And he beats the shit out. Yeah, of that him. was actually pretty. That's pretty violent. Yeah. Uh, the third one, I don't think she gets in the third one either. I don't think she gets in the third. I think she gets in the second one, or at least push. No, someone I think, pushes I think her. She only gets hit in the first one in this one pretty cool though <clears throat> and then sam's all like after what we've been through uh after what you've been with gail you guys talked like twice in the last movie yeah and you actually she asked want to you for help for she wanted to help you and you're like fuck you <laughs> yeah, she, and then you left got turned around showed up around there she happened to show up there a little bit later and then y'all happened to not die together Speaking of that, I don't even get why these characters return to come back into these movies because they're trying so hard to make them not apparent to the movies whatsoever. Um, it's like they just begrudgingly keep them in here because they feel like they have to. You mean like the legacy characters? Yeah. What is the point of keeping the characters in if they're just? What, why are you sh- saying characters implying Sydney's in this movie? Oh yeah, uh, Sydney sends her love. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Sydney sends her that's love. Not what she said. She said, that's not what she said. She said, "I spoke to Sydney. No, you She's didn't. not coming here. Is she? No, I spoke to her. She." uh she sent her best. No, she said love. She wants definitely. She's taking love. Mark and the kids somewhere safe. Yeah, that checks out. That checks out. Sydney hasn't done that one singular fucking time this entire franchise. And now, now, now she's had to change a tune. She had kids in the last movie, but that was too important for her to leave. She's like, you know what? Mommy's leaving right now. Like, what if you die, mommy? She's like, well, then I guess you won't have a mother. Yeah, and fucking she, she grow didn't even try. She, she didn't even hit the kids with the little mommy's not gonna die, sweeties. No, no. She said, well, if it happens, it happens. She, this is hey, this is a requel. Anything can happen. And then the kids were like, what's a requel? And she, gosh, you guys are idiots. You know nothing about the genre. She says, this isn't that old school scream. This is that new school scream. They're like, what's the recall? She says, your kids are going to love you, it. Oh, yeah. This is, maybe, hey, you'll be trusting your kids. Your kids are going to love it. Maybe our kids will like Scream 5 and 6. That'll be their scream. Yeah, that'll be their scream. They're like, oh, dude, because they'll be still making Scream by then. They'll yeah. be making like Scream 14. They'll be like, oh, Scream 14 sucks, but just, scream, scream 5 and 6 and 7. And God forbid if they go 8, 9, and 10 with the same characters. Like, it's a fucking. The Fran, the Fast and Furious reboot. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, dude, people are they're gonna have to have like wh- random people from the fucking what's that expression? With the woodworks come back crawling in. We're gonna have to get the most random fucking characters from these movies. Like all of a sudden, fucking Fonzie's kid be like, "Who's Fonzie?" Fonzie in the first one is the principal. We're gonna oh, have shit. his son come. That would have been awesome, and dude. Be like, I gotta avenge my dad against dude. This time it's personal. Because his son's actually in Arrested Development, playing young Henry Winkler. Yeah. So we should have him come in there playing. Well, I'm sorry, we're now, now wearing control of the franchise. I guess, yeah. Honestly, they gave it to the guy who gave it Amazing Spider-Man 2. There's no reason they can't give it to us. Yeah, we We're had, two guys who know about New York. We have better credentials Yeah, exactly. Honestly, yeah, we haven't made we haven't made fucking Scream 5. Exactly. Or Scream 6. So I say, honestly, we're on a much cleaner slate than he should be. But you know what? We watched all that, which is a lot more research than that guy did. That's true. He fucking... He heard of it. Heard about it. Yeah, he secondhand <laughs> heard. It wasn't even like he saw a trailer. He was, he was, he was in the other room getting, like, uh, not some guac. Yeah. To refresh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and as he was walking, he's like, "Oh, well, that's not good." What was that? And the guy's like, "I think it was this thing called Scream, some like oh, you slasher mean shout movie. movies." Nah, <laughs> I thought you would find that way funnier than you. Not did. even a little bit. Oh. Uh, you were unstable and born a killer, Sam. You just tased a guy in the clackers, and you're a killer. <laughs> no, 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 when did they say that? No, they never said that. I was that's just, hilarious. I was, just, I was just doing that in the whole "that's from the movie" voice. But yeah, that, that exactly. It's like a fucking dick. Okay. <laughs> But no, really, I don't understand. It's like, so if Sydney's not going to be in the movie because reasons, why why, why kill Dewey then neglect Sydney? What kind of psychopathic lunatic is Courtney Cox? Where she's like, no, 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 kill Dewey off, and then Sydney's staying at home with the kids. But then I'm only going to have like five to ten minutes of screen time. So I guess the whole point of this is so they can come back and do the, they're doing the Star Wars approach. 
So we're going to get like Scream, the Gale Weathers story. Oh my God, no. <laughs> did Oh my God. Spoiler alert, Gale dies in this movie, which means even no, future spoiler alert. No, she didn't. She didn't? The very end, someone's like, Gale's fine. We didn't even get to see it. They were just like, they oh, by Gale. I swear to God, the no very way. end, someone believe, else gets stared uh, at this movie. For argument's like, sake, I'll believe you, okay? But listen. <laughs> Let's say, let's say for non-argument's sake. You have to watch it again. No, stop. Never. <laughs> Never again. Let's say for argument's sake, she's not, she is dead. Uh, for, for, ignore the argument that she's not. Okay. It's just to clarify, they're going you to, she's not Do you think right? they're going to force ghost Gale? You mean like have her spirit in the movie? Uh, like Harry for, Potter yeah, style? No, like Star Wars. Force oh, ghost yeah. Gale. Like they were doing the force 100%. ghosting Billy. They have to. So he's reflection ghosting Billy. It's really interesting how he's. Sam's, I'll get into it more later when it fits into the time period, but it's just it's really interesting to think that it's very convenient. That Sam happens to walk around reflective surfaces as often as she does. Yeah, because otherwise yeah. Billy can't speak to her. That's so true. There's a portal. He only reflects her. I think <clears throat> I had a really good idea, but no, you didn't. I forgot. That was a great idea, actually. It really was. You would have been proud. Oh, actually, here's the idea. I remembered it now. Okay. The next one, Scream 7, is going to have Sam be in trouble, and she's going to collapse to the ground, and then she's going to see No, the, the next one's going to be all about... Uh, it's all going to be about fucking uh, the one from Va Princess Diaries, I'm thinking. Yeah, actually... She's that, a legacy yeah. character Why left. weren't the fucking twins the killers in this one? We have to have two killers. And you know what? I don't give a rat's ass about Richie's fucking dumb brother, dumb sister, and dumb dad, who are all clearly fucking each other. I don't give a rat's Whoa. ass about them. Whoa! What? We don't know that yet. What are you talking about? How would we possibly know that? We haven't reviewed that part of the movie yet. You're right, we didn't get to the part of the fucking. <laughs> we I'm have sorry. no, dude. What are you talking about, man? I'm sorry. We're at the part where they arbitrarily were like, uh, you know, they're sitting around the. They're my, sitting my around, Shut I'd up! Rather, I'd rather shut see different killers. Up. I don't care about these guys. Way to ruin the entire episode, man. I just want to finish my thought. Eleven episodes, eleven minutes, no. completely. Uh, let's just stop recording right now. You're gonna ruin it like that, man. You're gonna just talk about. Um, 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 don't you put up. that on me, Alex? All right. James Vanderbilt was just sitting around. And they're like, all right, well, we, I guess we we established a lot of the movie. Uh, what do we? What do we? Uh, do we, I guess we'll just. I guess we'll play Red Right Hand now. <laughs> we'll just play Red Right Hand randomly. It's about that time. It's, it's about that happens. time just just to play. We'll do it now. Yeah, no, right. That's that's fine. So that breaks up the first part of the movie. We now it's just like all right. I that happened before this with the whole uh, Flash Thompson stuff, Samara Weaver stuff. Never, ever, ever, ever mentioned again. Ever. This movie's so new school. Ever, screen, ever, ever. It's reinventing itself halfway through the movie. Yeah, because they thought, well, hey, you know, this is a big piece of shit. We might not get Scream 7. We might as well make Scream 6 part of Scream 7. It's like the reverse. It's like what they're trying to do with Superman back in the old days. Oh, it says Superman 1 and 2. two. So yeah. Make 2 into 1. All right. That's GM. Yeah, the reverse genius. engineering the process. They're saving money that way, too. I think they're spending more money that way. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but no, then we get. Um, after we get right right hand arbitrarily slapped in our face, they give us our right, here's another let's let's, let's uh, just let's jump the gun again. <laughs> and someone is out to make a sequel to the requel. What's a requel? <laughs> You're beautiful, sweetie. Let's hold questions till the end, please. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Dude, Fuck you, what are you talking about? Memory's really good. Thank you. No How am I pulling off all these lines just verbatim? And like the same it's, fucking it's insane, man. It's, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm giving this the same once over the rest of the cascade bit, <laughs> and I'm giving them that same raw energy where it's like, oh, I know, I, I, I don't really know what I'm saying. I'm just kind of like, you know, winging it, which is this entire movie's philosophy. It's pretty good and philosophy. It was more so like running around the chicken with the head cut off. So we got instead of the whole like cool, oh, that was so cool, oh, cool, you know, cool. It felt so real and you know meta, but instead it felt like shitty and stupid. Um, and then we figured out Scream Two is in college. Didn't even realize at first because yeah, it was so focused on, hey, we're in the city. Yep. We're in New York, which means Scream 7 hey, is Scream 3 because Scream 5 is also in college like Scream 2, and Scream 1 was in high school like Scream 5, right? Uh -huh. So they're following the same trend of 1 is 5, 6 is 2, which means now 3 has to be 7. Yeah. Which obviously means Roman Bridges, director. He's coming back. He's an orchestrating the entire thing. He never actually died at all. Yeah, he had a bulletproof vest on. He had a bulletproof vest on, and it did take Dewey quite a while to uh, shoot him in the head. And since Dewey's such a shitty cop, that's probably like a, a blank gun anyway because he's a moron. He's like, honestly more of a cartoon character than a real shit. And also, yeah, you know what it probably was? Mm. He probably shot him in the chest because he was like, all right, no one's going to notice that he's not dead if I shoot him in the chest. They'll assume he had a bulletproof vest on because he actually had a prop gun because mm -hmm. he's working on the film so much. He's not a cop in this jurisdiction. And like, come on out, you'll have some laughs. The fact that they didn't call back to that in Scream Three is actually sickening. <laughs> that would have been really funny for Dewey to say that the cop from 
Well, actually, from Northern California, not so much from New York. It still fits. <sighs> um, and what, what other dumb shit does Mindy say? Mindy's all show. She's like, "We are in a franchise. Bigger budget, bigger cast, bigger body count, you already longer chases, though? shootouts, beheadings. Just eat shit and die. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense." And fucking guess what, guys? They lied. None of those things are true at all. None of the fucking. Bigger budget, bigger cast, bigger body count, longer chases, shootouts, not, nothing. It's just the same old shitty thing. No, and then rule added. three, no one is safe. You've said that eight million fucking times, and guess what? Everyone's fucking safe. And she says, she says cannon fodder. She, Minnie has the audacity to say, that's what I say. I say cannon <laughs> fodder. I call everyone cannon fodder. And then they're going to take my dialogue, my lingo, my jargon, my rhetoric. It's fucked up is what it is. My vernacular, my vocabulary, it's ridiculous. It's, 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 it's a highway robbery. <laughs> I think this is probably- no, we're not done. There's more rules. Not only is no one safe, even legacy characters can go. And then the rant ensues of naming characters who die in the movies because they thought that would fill up a few blank pages. No, anyone can die. Even Gail. Even Sid. Wait, Sydney isn't in this movie, so I guess, I guess just Gail. I guess only Gail can die. Only Gail. I guess who dies? Gail. Because Sydney's not in the movie, so what was the point of that line? Oh, let's talk talking about Kirby. That's how. That's the, that's the, what, just carries that same, because that carries the same kind of weight for this movie. It's like, they figured, the Gail and Sydney duo, the one we've seen before? No, no, no. It's <laughs> the Gail and Kirby. Those are the legacy characters. Yeah, but I also think she's referring to them, the group themselves, because they're in the last movies. Legacy well, she does, because then she says, then she says, and now anyone can die, even especially, even especially, even especially, Sarah, Sam and Tara. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go on a limb here. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm being pessimistic, but <laughs> I have a feeling they aren't going to die, the two of them specifically, even especially, that they won't die. And I also think it'd be really cool if this movie stopped acknowledging that there's main characters and supporting characters because this is real fucking life. People are dying <laughs> and have a little respect for what the character. Imagine being a real. Can you imagine that people are dying all around you? And they aren't just canon and fodder because they're real fucking people. And we all get this, right? We get this. We die. We, we all die. We get this, right? We all are very capable of dying. Mm. How fucking annoying would it be to hear some moronic mouth Mindy just this, 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 just just yelp on about how there are there are main characters and they no longer have plot armor and goddamn it people are dying around you all around you <laughs> be normal everyone's just this real strange little theatrical troll in this movie they're the cannon fodder imagine how pissed off that would make you yeah it's pretty fucked up I think it's supposed to be a commentary on how I don't know I lost it again no it's a meditation on motherhood That's and grieving I was say uh, let's uh, introduce the rest of the group, right? And some more can some more characters who are definitely not just going to be killed off. And the, the, do we need this scene anymore? Too, we're six movies in. Like we get it. Okay. Well, how, how else will we be introduced to Ethan, the shy, nerdy guy that no one expects because he's weird, shy, and dorky? And no, we do expect him because I don't know who the fuck he is, and you just introduced him, which means he's obviously a killer. No, he was in one scene before, which you couldn't tell he's in a costume. So this is, in theory, this is the first time we're seeing this character fifty-five minutes into the movie. Is well, I guess you know what. Maybe the reason I didn't know him before was because before the scene, before this next line from Mindy, which is weird, 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 okay? <laughs> before this next part, where I, I just saw him as a face. But then when Mindy's like, um, he's going to die. He, he, when he asks Mindy if he's going to die a virgin, yeah. then I kind of, he was, a, he was a person me. It was the opposite of what Flash Thompson said when he was saying, like, hold, the, the more stabby, stabby, the less person, person. Yeah. Once we saw Ethan as a real man who's actually a virgin, it's like, oh, shit, now you feel for the kid. He doesn't want to die a virgin. Mm. Which you think maybe Mindy, who, you know, at the very least Chad, who I think almost died a virgin, maybe him and his bitch sister wouldn't have to be assholes that poor little old Ethan and could have had sympathy for him and been like, you know what, man? That does suck. I'm not going to make fun of you and say, uh, overshared? Uh, overshared? Uh, 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 overshared? That's not even really oversharing. That's my point. That's kind of like a genuine thing to say. It feels like that's not even that weird of a thing to say. And he's a freshman you in college. You think Chad would have been like, no, man, for real? Respect. Wait till Mindy, marriage. Have sex with him. And she's like, what? Como say what? I don't think we need those scenes in these movies anymore. I also think this is the worst iteration of this fucking scene at this point. I don't know if it's well, just because it's this easy it or break it for this? Is, it, is it better or worse when they then introduce the sex positive roommate who, surprise, surprise, I also hate? To answer your question, uh, is Mindy always like this? Yes. She sucks. When she, she's like, um, 
also, doesn't she know Mindy? They're living together, and she, for some reason, says, gosh, is Mindy always like this? Mindy's in love with them. It's Sam, Tara, and uh, Sex Positive Roommate. 47, whatever. But whatever, Mindy and Chad are hanging out over there, too, are they not? Yeah, they don't live there. They don't know each other? It doesn't it's been seem six months. Way. Mindy's busy. She's trying to get out coming in the college hall. She doesn't have time to hang out with a fucking redhead uh, uh, roommate who's also... All right, fine. Then to answer Sex Positive's question, if by this you mean vapid, a vapid whore who's incapable of mimicking human conversation with a goddamn superiority complex and the ego of a god that's so overinflated it's criminal, yes, Mindy. She's pretty much always like this, yeah. Most, <laughs> most often the time. She's usually this exact way. You know, in the first movie, they do this whole fucking character thing. They're like, oh, there's main characters and shit. Doesn't it seem nearly as stupid? It's somehow charming that everyone's so insensitive to people dying around them. Like you said, these it just seems ridiculous. Because they you guys keep are saying, so wise like, because this, this girl's literally saying, uh, who gives, who cares that person died? It's just they're they're a backup character. It's like you you're is this this is the thing where it's like you need to be hospitalized and institutionalized for saying things like that. You're making this a mockery of real life. And also, she's saying the whole time she's safe. It's like, bitch, this has happened six times. This is the sixth time there's killings going on now. Like, what do you mean you're probably in the clearing? Well, they flip it on its head this time because then she says, if we're all, because then uh, Sex Positive Sally says, if we're all suspects, then you're all suspects. But actually, none of you are suspects. I don't know who any of you are. <laughs> Randy was wrong. No one is a suspect. There is no formula. There's no very simple formula. <laughs> it's very, very complicated. It's very complicated. And what the fuck is this divide amongst old school, new school characters? They think that these chuckle fucks think they're the first movie. They're the legacy characters, like you were pointing out. Why is Min? There's another separate. Now there's three levels of separation. There's <laughs> the legacy characters. There's the brand new cannon fodder characters introduced only for the purpose of slashing. Uh -huh. And then there's the characters who happen to survive, God forbid, mm -hmm. from the last movie. And they're also legacy characters. There's now three levels of characters. Mm -hmm. And Kirby's a weird, like, if anything, it's one, two, three, and this is a new trilogy. I think there's three too many levels of dipshits occupying these movies. Well, four is kind of like a spinoff, so it's even crazier when you think about how many layers there are, what you just said. Oh, I guess you're right. Kirby's a... So, so what that is that? Not, that, means that a spinoff character? This is multiplicity. This is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. It feels like that. You can tell when you're watching, it's just a copy of a thing that was copied before. And then copied again. What? This is a copy of a copy of a thing. I said, you can tell when you watch it, it feels like it's a copy of a thing that was copied before. Yeah. It's a very simple formula. It's a very simple formula. Another very simple formula is when Kirby uh, is looking at the DNA report or whatever. Or we're just not, yeah, she's like, there's Roman Bridges DNA. She's actually, I'm sorry, I lied. She says, Roman Bridges, director, DNA, <laughs> found on the mask. And then immediately, after, after just getting that information, just handed to her. She just found out right then and there <laughs> that the DNA of the mask is Roman Bridges, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And what is, she, what is her follow-up to that information being presented to her? Who's Roman Bridges? Hmm. Dropping the killer's masks in reverse, almost like he's counting down to something. That's why she's on that special wow. task force. You are, a, you are a fucking... You are an inspiration, Kirby Reed. <laughs> There's a reason why you are on the FBI special task force in Atlanta. You're probably running the whole entire... I'm sorry they haven't given you Quantico yet. <laughs> Someone told you there was a mask there, and you were able to instantaneously deduce that, obviously, this is, a, this is the killer's call signs. They're counting down to something. Wow. I don't even think Columbo could have made that kind of a jump. He's, she, she, you could have given Columbo a two-hour you know, movie of the week presentation, and he still wouldn't have been able to solve that. It could have been Columbo 20 years later like with the, the, the fucking Ironside movies and everything. Yep. <laughs> Never in a million years. No one can do that kind of ace work. Only Kirby Reed, FBI, special agent out of Atlanta. She specializes weird, in this field. Weird, 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 weird. <laughs> Good thing Kirby, though, like I said, you know, just some, some real ace detective work. And then also, she, she, you know, she kind of she does point out not, not only is she not only is she a great you know detective in solving crime, she really understands character as well when she has the the um, respect, for, you know, because you know there's a sort of respect between criminal and cop, you know, it's the it's the hunter and the prey, the predator, the prey, you know, yeah, yeah. So that's a bond, and she she can see through that bond, she can reflect on that bond, she can say cool things like you know Roman Bridges was the only single ghost face killer. Kudos to him for ambition. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kudos to him for ambition. Yeah, again, once again, guys, he killed people. He killed people, you know. But hey, you can't take away from him. He was an ambitious guy. Oh uh, yeah, second to none. Honestly, that that the, yeah, great the ambition, ethic. second to none. Yeah, whining like a little brat, second to none. <laughs> and this is where the movie takes an actual positive turn, shockingly. In you know, we'll call this we'll call this the core four effect. I love it. Because all, all right, all right, listen, okay. I like Chad now. Yep. 
The first thing, you know, the first thing I said in the other thing, talking about how much I hated him, that was that was that was wrong. Core four, guy does deserve a high five. I don't know why they're trying to rag on like it's not a cool thing. It's that was kind of awesome. cool. All right, that felt pretty fucking cool. Your legacy character nonsense conversation over there, that sounded stupid. Core four, that was is dumb. Cool Core and four. It and now, if anyone from the film behind or in front of the camera is listening, you can't say I wasn't fair, and you can't say I never gave you anything. I just said that was a pretty cool thing. The core four is pretty cool, and if it's Jenna Ortega, I'm still I still think you're pretty awesome, even with the whole making like really bad movies thing. I don't know what I'm not sure what that's like. How that factors into your grand plan of like <laughs> getting that Oscar, or getting that Golden Globe. If you're such a set, if you're set, if you're sets. Maybe, maybe, hey, maybe this is actually the plan for if you're if you're aiming for the Golden Globe, not the prestigious Oscar. Maybe making a few shitty movies is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe get like a golden raspberry in there, which I'm sure if you follow this trajectory of Scream 7, it's very possible. Just some career advice. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I got like 400 subscribers. I'm, I'm a very, uh, you know, successful man. Very ambitious. Very ambitious. Like Roman, Bridges, Roman Bridges director. Roman Bridges director.